Welcome to Top Notch Lectures. In this video, the topic is about capacity planning. So, capacity planning, what do you mean by this term? In simple as that, in some general term, we can refer this as a maximum production capacity which can be attained within a normal working schedule. So, uh, so the, this capacity planning is essential to be determining optimum utilization of resource and also it plays a very important role in the decision making. So for example you can say like uh, extension of existing operations, modification to a product lines, starting a new product etc. So about the capacity planning, a theoretical part will be on my next video which has been given as a PPT presentation. And uh, today's video is about the numericals based on the capacity planning. So before that you should know like what do you mean by capacity planning. So this is one of the important problem where you can expect in your upcoming exams. So uh, gen in a general term you can say like the capacity means it is uh, considered as an ability to achieve, store or produce like that. So in an organization Capacity would be the ability of a given system to produce the output within a specific time period. Now here we are seeing this topic in operation management. So in operation management it refers as an amount of the input resources available to produce relative output over a period of time. So this is an outline of the capacity planning because we can't uh, do roughly the numericals. Um, so that's why I have given an outline of it. So for a full theoretical and for the clear explanation and also I have given some examples relating to it. So you can see my next video on PPT presentation regarding the capacity planning. And today we can see about uh, capacity planning numericals. Fine. So this is the question. So this is the question uh, which has been um, given in your ICMI study material. So calculation of requirement of plant and machinery. This is one of one of the problems. There is a numericals given. And here the question states that a department works on 8 hours shift. That is 250 days a year and has the usage data of a machine has given below. So they have given number of hours the shift works and also Per year, what is the number of days of working also they have given. And in this tabular column, they have given the uh, how the machinery has been used. So that data which has been used. See here, uh, the product X is of annual demand and uh, for the processing time they have given for each and every product. For, for product X is 300 and the processing time is 4 hours. So to produce a 300 units of product, the product X, it needs 4 hours of time. Then with the product Y, the demand units is for 400 and the processing time is of 6 hours. Then with the product of Z, the demand is of 500 units and the processing time to complete it is by 3 hours. So we have to determine the number of machines required. So this is the totally uh, for each and every product demand has been given and the processing time also given and we are supposed to find out the number of machines required. So this is what we are supposed to find it. Fine we will just know like uh, we will go into the problem like how to uh, what is it how to solve this problem. First of all I will just work out one by one like they have given uh, they were asked us regarding the number of machines required. Okay. So they have given me the number of machines required. So we have a formula. See, we can't say like it's a specific standard formula because uh, this is not a mathematical thing, right? For mathematics in algebra, in, uh, there are various uh, chapters it involves few formulas but here it doesn't mean like that I have just given you a very in a simple manner like 
so um, the machines required is will, will be as per the workload and also the production capacity okay so i'll just do this problem first we can write down the formula based on what i have said now number of machines required so this is the question so the requirement of machine will be based on the workload right so workload so what is the demand and how how much the processing time it's all based on this so only based on that we have to do we have to calculate workload per year then divided by so how much capacity a machine should be so they have already given in the question like per year there is 250 days and 8 hours shift is, is, has been working with the workers so only based on that we have to do production capacity per machine now we can say like uh, so to workload per year we have to we need this uh, amount right so this part we need for that we need calculations we have calculations for both so we can see one by one calculation of workload okay so to calculate the workload per year we have few informations in this problem that is for each and every product they have given some annual demand and also the processing time so for that particular units for 300 units it needs four hours of time so totally how much we need so it's simple we have to multiply we have to take a product of it x equal to annual demand into processing time for product x the annual demand when given the question is 300 the processing time is 4 hours we are just multiplying both see i can say it on a simple manner just we have to multiply you can get the workload per year but um, few of them can understand but most of them don't know why this process has come why we have to multiply so this is what happens in each and every case so in case of a numericals they might have given uh, in the questions in the, in, the, in the exams they could have given like uh, some confusing part or uh, anything uh, which is uh, not understandable by you few of them i'm saying so for them i'm just giving a clear explanation then it comes to 1200 hours and in the same way for y also we are calculating Four hundred into six, we get two thousand four hundred hours. Then for z, five hundred into three thousand five hundred hours. So this is what uh, how the workload uh, it gets calculated. Okay. Now so all this part that is which I am doing with the box all we have to add it so summation of this total workload will be equal to all these things 1200 plus 2400 plus 1500 it gives you 5100 hours then in the next thing so they are asked with the production capacity per machine k 
calculation of production capacity per machine. So we have to calculate based on the information given in the problem. So they have given the capacity. What is the capacity? That is how many hours it works per day and uh, uh, to, for the total years how much uh, days they are working. So only based on that we can calculate the production capacity of a machine. Okay. So they have given working hours. That is 8, 8 hours, then number of days in a year, number of days working in a year. So they have given it as 250 days. So therefore, to calculate the production capacity, It's 250 days, number of days into per day. This is per year, it's 250 days. And per day, number of working hours is 8. So we're just multiplying both and we get 2000 here. And so this thing is for workload and this is for production capacity. And this we have to substitute with this formula. Okay, this formula. So we will get 5,100 by 2,000 which is 2.55. So 2.55 we can read it as 3, 3 machines. So 3 machines is required for this type of situations. So the next problem is on the same topic capacity planning so here they have given some various work centers where they have given few outputs also and the actual output also is given in this problem let's move to this problem a firm has four weeks and four work centers a b c and d in series with individual capacities in units per day shown in the figure so the raw material over here for each and every work center for each and work center, this is the capacity units which has been given in this problem. For A, it's 380 units. For B, 360 units. For C, 340 units. And for D is 400 units. Actual output, the uh, what is it, the firm has to produce is by 300 units. Now in this question, they have raised few questions regarding how to identify the bottleneck center and how is the system efficiency and uh, system capacity is calculated. Let's see one by one. So first of all, we should know the meaning of bottleneck center. Bottleneck center. What do you mean by this term? So bottleneck is a point of congestion in a production system. So as you have seen in this problem, the, uh, the assembly line is in a, it is in a sequence. The workload is in a sequence, right? So um, usually it occurs when workloads arrive too quickly. Uh, for the production process to handle it and it affects these usually this bottleneck it affects the level of production capacity that a firm can achieve each month okay this is what about the bottleneck sector and in this problem we have to check like what is the minimum capacity what is the minimum capacity where the work center deals with in this problem we can see like see there are various work centers as you have as you can easily see this 340 is the minimum capacity among these four work centers. 340 is the minimum capacity. So thus uh, C is considered to be a bottleneck center in a form. So C is the bottleneck center so again i am saying so usually the work center which has a minimum capacity can be considered as a bottleneck center okay so the next thing what they have asked is what is the 
system capacity see as we have already uh, started with this video in the beginning i have told you what is the system capacity so usually the system capacity is referred as the uh, maximum production capacity okay so maximum production capacity which can be attained with a normal within a normal working schedule but here what have to what we have to see is uh, maximum capacity which they can give okay so the system which already gives a bottleneck center can be considered as a system capacity over here so in this uh, second question the answer will be c here because system capacity is usually the bottleneck center whatever it has been derived so c is considered as a system capacity then the next thing what is system efficiency see system efficiency means usually in a firm in a factory in a company whatever maybe you call us so a system has to be very effective and also efficient for highest utility to the user of the system okay so uh, broadly speaking we can say like the effectiveness is the measure of goodness of the output why the efficiency is a measure of the productivity here they talk about the efficiency so we can uh, check with the productivity that is the measure of the output against the input okay so for this we have some formula because system efficiency what i have told you the meaning is depends on the output and also the system capacity so we can do it so system efficiency will be equal with the actual output what is the actual output as they have given in the question what is the actual output a firm can produce so that thing that and divided by system capacity here we have found an answer regarding the system capacity as 340 units so that we can substitute actual output they have given in the problem is 300 then the system capacity is uh, which you have found with the C bottleneck center. C is of 340 units. So here we can write just 340 units. So substitute with the same. So this can be converted into percentage. This can be converted into percentage. Eighty-eight point two three percentage. Okay, so that's all about this problem. See, again, I'm saying this problem is a most expected question. You can work on it, and for each and everything, bottleneck center, system capacity, system efficiency, how you have derived, you have to write a line. <clears throat> I mean, a meaning of it. See, you can use the. Study material, what they have given, you can write it down or else whatever I have explained, that also you can write it down, not an issue. So this is the most expected question uh, in chapter, that is in study note 2. Kindly subscribe and click on the bell icon for further notifications. Thank you.